Hi, it's Dwyer. Today is Thursday, June the 14th, 2018. Let's talk about the rematch between Golovkin and Canelo returning from a drug suspension. Let's be upfront and clear about that. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, just a quick brief word. This is not an advertisement. I have no ownership stake in the company I'm about to talk about, right? Nor am I being paid by that company. Like you, like many of you, I manage my own investments and retirement, right? You know, I've been blown away by how good Real Vision is, realvision.com, right? They've slashed their prices. They're only charging $180 for the year. Let's just say Raul Paul has put together quite the investment idea juggernaut, right? I'm surprised by the quality of the gas that they have on. <clears throat> um, I like the differing opinions if you're someone who manages their own investments, um, I would encourage you to give this a look. I subscribe to a few, uh, we'll call them financial resources, and uh, this has greatly exceeded my expectations. My own thesis, briefly, in terms of the world of money, uh, nothing I can say in any boxing video is going to give you a bigger leg up than investing in silver long term. Let me also say that you should view all government debt and bonds with suspicion. What you're looking at now, in my opinion, is the maturation of the internet. Amazon um, is just the tip of the iceberg. I believe the future is going to involve a lot of tokenization. Uh, the idea of buying ownership shares in real estate, moving online. Um, I feel that the Internet of Things is going to continue to grow. What you're really looking at right now, in my opinion, is the blockchain, privacy-centric cryptocurrency, and transaction fee-free Internet commerce all taking off. Right. For those of you interested in a fair valuation of cryptocurrency, according to the idea that um, money times velocity equals price times transaction, then I encourage you to take a look at CoinFairValue.com. Okay, CoinFairValue.com. You're going to find out that certain cryptocurrencies out there right now, based on usage. Things like Dash are greatly undervalued. Now the casinos, let's talk boxing. The casinos have mispriced, and I mean badly mispriced, a hedge that I believe you can drive a Mack truck through for the Golovkin-Canelo fight. Right? First off, let's be clear. I don't care what the judges said at the end of the first fight. I don't. I believe you don't care either because you the public have spoken with the betting line the spread for the second fight. Right? Forget the public hoopla and stuff like that. We all saw the first fight and at the end of the first fight you the public have made Golovkin a 4-7 to seven favorite according to Skybet right now. Thursday, June the 14th, 2018. I would encourage you to look up the odds on oddschecker.com. You've made Golovkin a 4-7 to seven favorite to win the rematch. So forget all this talk and all this hype and all this promotional nonsense about, oh, the first fight was a draw. You didn't think it was a draw. You thought after watching that first fight that Golovkin should be a less than even money favorite, in fact, substantially less than even money, a four to seven favorite. Think about that. Right? A four to seven favorite. So, let's just say this. We're looking at the rematch now. 
and in my opinion the hedge here and it's because of a mispricing on Saul Alvarez by Kao. The hedge here makes itself. If I had a gun to my head and was asked to just pick who the winner is in the rematch, I would say the winner is going to be one of history's best middleweight champions, Golovkin. I don't believe the fight is close. Keep in mind, though. I picked Golovkin before the first fight, right? So if you want to look for bias or what have you, okay. I thought Golovkin would win the first fight. That's what I saw, even though Golovkin fought a terrible fight that first fight. I saw Golovkin win the first fight. I like Golovkin in the second fight. Here's the catch. You can hedge the 4-7. to seven. Think about it. You can hedge the four to seven with Saul Alvarez by KO. Would it surprise you to learn that Skybet right now, as I'm making this video, has Saul Alvarez by KO as a four to one? They're giving you so much value on Saul Alvarez by KO that now with less than even money odds, you can walk into the casino and say, hell, let me pick the guy who I think is going to win the fight. Let's make this simple. I'll take Golovkin. And for cheap insurance, I'll take Canelo by KO. And some of the expected value I'm getting on the Canelo by KO at 4-1, to one, I can transfer to the Golovkin side of the play. Well, let's make this even more interesting. Did you know that the 4-1 to one on Canelo by KO is actually more expensive than the current market price? Would it surprise you to know that if you went to William Hill, for example, or Betfair, for example, you would be able to get Saul Alvarez by KO at 8-1. to one. 8 to 1. So what does that mean? Let's say you're like me and you don't think Saul Alvarez has a snowball's chance in hell of winning this fight. Now you can come in and with your A bet, we'll call it, your lead bet, we'll pretend we're boxers. You can say, you know, I'm going to put more money down. I'm going to put more money down on Golovkin. Right? At four to seven. Rather than put two bucks down, I'm going to put 200 bucks down. Or I might put 500 bucks down on Golovkin. If the roof caves in, and if he walks into a big shot from Canelo, who is one of boxing's pound for pound biggest punchers, let's always remember that. If Golovkin gets caught, and I'm sitting there watching the TV and I'm thinking, man, I didn't see that coming. Then your next thought is going to be, thank God that I have an 8 to 1 hedge. 8 to 1 hedge on exactly this. Canelo by KO. Right? So at that point, then you're saying to yourself, at least I'm getting my money back, not a profit. Because you've really transferred the value to the Golovkin side of the play. You want to set it up so if Golovkin wins, you get X. If Canelo gets a KO at 8 to 1 odds, you get the same X. Your goal is simply to profit. Let's talk about why Golovkin, in my opinion, wins the rematch. By the way, I'm not expecting Golovkin to win the rematch by decision. I'm expecting a stoppage. Let's talk about why. To beat Golovkin, in my eyes, you need to come from one of two neighborhoods. In fact, let's change that. Not come from one or two neighborhoods. You need to live. You need to live today. Right at the time of the fight, 
in one of two neighborhoods. The fireman neighborhood. Right, my brother-in-law is a fireman. The fireman neighborhood where you're willing to run into burning buildings. Right, you're convinced. You're just simply convinced that if you bob and weave your way inside, if you get inside on a power puncher, right? Someone like George Foreman. If you get inside on George Foreman and trade shots, you believe he'll wilt, right? You're not trying to rope or dope anybody. You're not even trying to wait for rounds. You're not waiting for anyone to get tired. You believe that if you get inside and trade shots, you win the fight. Think Mike Tyson. Think Joe Fraser, who found out he was wrong about fighting George Foreman. Think Kasim Uma when he fought Golovkin in one of the better challenges of Golovkin. Right? In my opinion, you either need to be a fireman, have that mindset, right? The building's burning, that's where I'm going. Or you need to come from the stylistic back foot, behind the jab, southpaw neighborhood. We'll call it the slick back foot left end, where it's all about jabs angles, traps, and timing. You can operate with chaos around you. You can operate with knockout punches whizzing by your ear a few inches away from you for 12 rounds. Think Billy Joe Saunders by the way, Golovkin apparently had Billy Joe Saunders lined up as an opponent. What a shame that fight fell through. That'd be a better fight than this fight. Right? Think Billy Joe Saunders. Think Demetrius Andre. That's a name you need to keep in the back of your head. Dangerous. Dangerous. Possible opponent for Golovkin. Think Danny Jacobs when he went southpaw against Golovkin. Right now, in my opinion, the first Golovkin-Canelo fight showed us that Canelo, who is a better technician than advertised, who has the faster hands than Golovkin, who is a big puncher. But Canelo doesn't come from either neighborhood. Now let's talk about a core belief here before I go further. I know many commentators, Stephen A. Smith comes to mind, and I know many fighters, right? Andre Ward comes to mind, talks about the idea of levels in boxing. Right? You'll be watching a fight and the commentator will say, Oh, he's a good domestic level fighter. <laughs> right? He's a European level fighter. Let me offer a different opinion here. I don't believe boxing is about levels as much as it is rock, paper, scissors. Right? It's not He's better than him. I actually think the better way to think about it is styles make fights. Does his style work against this opponent? Right? Kirkland Lang did beat Roberto Duran. Iran Barkley beats Thomas the Hitman Hearns twice. Now let's get back to Canelo's style. In my opinion, Canelo views himself. It's an identity thing. 
I think Canelo views himself as a deconstructionist like Terence Crawford. I believe Canelo, big punch and all, when he's in the ring, isn't trying to be a Mike Tyson fireman. He isn't a guy who just shows up in the first round and says, me wait until this guy gets tired for what? Right? As Tyson himself put it, everyone has a plan until they get hit in the mouth. Right? Tyson would come in. Tyson would say, okay, here's Marvis Fraser. He doesn't hit as hard as me. I trust my hand speed. I'm going to bob and weave a little bit. This is prime Tyson. I'm going to swivel at the hips a little bit. I'm going to get inside. Then I'm going to start throwing power shots. Then I'm going to look at the guy and see if he's still standing. That's not Canelo. Canelo has the big punch. Canelo against a guy like Liam Smith can say, okay, how many of these body shots are you going to take? But in the opening rounds, Canelo's not jumping in, even when he's fighting a smaller opponent, like an Amir Khan. Canelo thinks he can stay at arm's length and deconstruct Khan. By the way, he was wrong. I agree with Teddy Atlas. Khan's winning every round in that fight. If Khan was a little bit savvier, he might have shut out Canelo. Right? So, let me just say this. We know from the first fight, we know it, that Canelo cannot stay in the pocket against Golovkin. Right. He can't fight the Mike Tyson fight, folks. He can't. That's Canelo doing a Ginger Rogers, right? Performing the back foot to Golovkin's front foot in the meaningful rounds of that first fight, right? Canelo, after a decent beginning, abdicates the pocket, moves away from Golovkin. Golovkin's there ready to trade. Right? Mike Tyson would have said, hey, this is Christmas, let's trade. That's not Canelo. Canelo, at times, wants to be on his back foot. Canelo's vision of boxing is that Terrence Crawford vision. Right? About, you know, hey, how can I figure out how to take away parts of the other guy's game? That style, in my opinion doesn't work against Golovkin. I don't think it would work for Terence Crawford against Golovkin. Understand, Golovkin's style is made to beat that style because Golovkin has a gift. It's rare. You've heard me here online talk about mid-range hookers. I'll name one. Danny Garcia. Right? The welterweight multiple champion, right, in different weight classes. Just imagine if Danny Garcia, instead of being able to dole out big punishment at mid-range, could actually dole out big punishment with both hands from long range. Understand, Golovkin doesn't even have to be in the pocket to completely annihilate you with both hands. And he hits so hard, right? Like Canelo Golovkin's one of the hardest punchers in boxing. He hits so hard that once he lands from long range, then he moves in just a little bit. So he's mid-range. You're practically finished, right? Believe it or not, and I know this is gonna shock some people, Vanis Martirosian is a above average defensive fighter. Vanis has damn good defense. All you have to do is look at his history. Vanis is a guy, he's the KG veteran guy, who's fought world class competition, world class, and has gone the distance with world class competition. 
You watch Vanus fights, and Vanus always disarms his opponent, takes away some of his opponent's tools. He's fighting Golovkin. You would have thought Vanus had no defense. Vanus is getting hit with every shot in the book at the end of that fight. You would have thought Vanus had no chin. This is a guy with one of the better chins in boxing. That's because Golovkin from long range, from long range, is able to dole out incredible punishment. Have you ever seen Martin Murray as beaten up? Another guy with above average defense. Have you ever seen him as beaten up as he was against Golovkin? You want to know how much firepower Golovkin throws out there? Have you ever seen Canelo? A guy who I've said in this video has one of the biggest punches in boxing. Run as much in any fight as he did against Golovkin. Staying in the pocket doesn't work. Right? Golovkin is the kind of guy who you know what's coming. You can't stop it. He's what I call a fastball pitcher. Right? So when you're in the batter's box against him, and you're thinking, oh, you know, if he throws a curve, I'm going opposite field. I'm going to work him deep in the count and stuff like that. Let's say you're up at the plate, and you, you, you know, you're channeling Tony Gwynn up there. You're a Rod Carew. You're the scientific hitter who's thinking, hey, you're Wade Boggs. You know, if he throws this, I'm, you know, you're Jose Altuve, right? You know, you're, you're the professional hitter who's thinking about what field he's going to, whether he's going to try to hit a pop-up or a ground ball. You're thinking about the part of the baseball you're going to hit. Folks, that doesn't work against Nolan Ryan. Right? Understand. The whole concept is you don't have time to think. Right? You're not, you know, you're going to do what? Deconstruct the fastball? We already know. The temperaments of the two men are different. Golovkin will literally run across the ring. Revisit the Kell Brook film. Kell Brook has great legs. He's hunted down. The hunting gets so bad that his corner says, that's it. Where's the towel? We're waving the towel. Right? That's not the Canelo mindset. Some guys, Miguel Cotto's older brother, have jumped on Canelo. Canelo's been overwhelmed in that moment. Canelo's a deconstructionist who wants to be selective. Right? Golovkin is the cautious stalker. He's stalking you. He's not thinking about his back foot. He's stalking you. Right? So, if Canelo were Joe Fraser, right, a guy who was so convinced in his left hook, revisit, by the way, <coughs> Ali Fraser won the first round. First round. You're going to look at the left hooks Joe throws, and you're going to realize that Joe didn't want a series of fights against Ali. Fraser enters the ring against an unbeaten beaten Ali, and he's throwing left hooks in the first round out the gate. Right? The mindset is, hey, you know, who needs a round two or a round three? Right? Joe Fraser against Bob Foster, one of the hardest hitting light heavyweight champs in history. Hall of Famer. Joe Fraser's in there throwing left hooks. I think that fight does make it to the second round, but you understand. Joe Fraser's, you know, trying to trade. Now, that could work against Golovkin. Golovkin has improved his inside game a lot since the Kasim Uma fight. Right? He has a left hook to the body that's rough. Right? Golovkin also now has a jab. That can flush some guys inside out. 
right? But unless you are a Joe Fraser type, bob and weave, a Mike Tyson type, the whole upper body, Tyson's going like this. Unless you're a guy with the mindset of, hey, he's going to throw a jab. I'm going to get inside. I'm going to hit him in the mouth. If you're not ready to stay on Golovkin's chest, in my opinion, unless you're a slick southpaw behind a jab who can move, you're going to be in trouble. Right, Golovkin? Excuse me. Canelo isn't a southpaw. What Danny Jacobs did. What Billy Joe Saunders wants to try to do. What Demetrius Andre wants to try to do. By the way, Saunders and Andre are both out campaigning right now for fights against Golovkin. Right? That person who you thought was a politician on the corner with the vote for me sign might not even be a politician. It might be a boxer who's trying to get a crack at the middleweight title. Right? Or a reigning middleweight champion who wants to try to unify. The slick lefties are out. They want Golovkin. Canelo's not a slick lefty. Canelo's not a deep in the pocket Mike Tyson. Canelo is made to order for Golovkin. Let's talk about the first fight. I thought Canelo overperformed. Now, make no mistake. Make no mistake. I thought Golovkin wins the fight. But I thought Canelo did better than expected. I thought it surprised Golovkin. I don't think Golovkin thought in his wildest dreams that that fight would make it to the ninth round. Right? I think Golovkin, you know, thought to himself, okay, look, I've sparred with this guy. I've seen this guy. We now know Golovkin privately thought Canelo was a juicer. And yet Golovkin was still willing to fight Canelo. Right? I think Abel Sanchez, who had Canelo visit his gym, and I think his fighter, <laughs> Golovkin, <laughs> I think they both thought. And I know... In boxing, when someone sticks a mic in your face, you're going to be respectful, right? But I think both of these guys thought, look, this is an eight-round fight at best. So Golovkin didn't pace himself. We get to the later part of the fight, and Golovkin fades a little bit. Now, I know the skeptics out there can say, whoa, didn't he, didn't he also fade against Danny Jacobs? I know there's... The Danny Jacobs crowd out there who first off think their man won the fight and second off know their man won the later rounds in the fight, right? I'll agree with the latter, not the former. But put it this way, because Golovkin owns the pocket in the bouts between them, in other words, Golovkin's a little outside the pocket, so he has an innate advantage in that Canelo cannot sit in the pocket and stay there, right? Canelo has to be backing up. Or Canelo has to take out a watch and wait for Golovkin to be tired. In other words, here's Canelo. Okay, is it the ninth round? All right, let me, let me try to come in, right? When Golovkin's 100%, he owns the pocket. So... All Golovkin has to do, in my opinion, because Canelo can't bum rush him. Canelo doesn't have Tyson's upper body movement. Joe Fraser's bob and weave. He also doesn't want to charge in on Golovkin. He's not a fireman. Right? He's not going to run to the burning building. That's not his DNA. So in my opinion, all Golovkin has to do is to pace himself a little better. Right? Golovkin's running in too much in the first fight. What he needs to do is to realize that being a little bit more unpredictable, picking spots where he says, okay, first minute of this round, I'm going to be cautious like I usually am early in fights. Right? Golovkin doesn't run across the ring and try to take out a fighter. No, Golovkin comes out and he looks at you for a bit. He needs to do that in some of the middle rounds. If he does that, if he corrects the pacing issue, 
folks, I think this is an eight-round fight. It's only because Golovkin fights a bad fighting pacing-wise, a bad fight pacing-wise in the first fight, that we have fictions, like the idea that the first fight's a draw, right? The gamblers know better than that. Just look at the odds for the second fight. We have the fiction that the first fight's a draw, right? And there's outcry for the rematch. If Golovkin just cleans up his own performance, I think he gets the stoppage. But you, the gambler, don't even have to rely on the stoppage. Because right now, the idea of Saul Alvarez by KO is mispriced. Right? They're giving you 8 to 1 odds in some casinos. 8 to 1. So you can grab that. And then drain the value by putting more money on the Golovkin simply to win. So even though Golovkin, in my opinion, should win this by KO. Right? Think about it. You're going to get to the later rounds. Canelo is not going to have the benefit of tainted meat in the preparation. Which he was going to have had they gone forward with the first fight. I mean, excuse me, the originally set rematch, right? I think late in this fight when Canelo gets tired, he's going to really get tired. The bet I like is Golovkin simply to win the fight at 4-7, to seven, hedged with Canelo by KO, TKO, or disqualification. At four to one at Skybet, or you can get eight to one at William Hill Betfair and other shops. Shop around, get the eight to one. Hedge it with Golovkin simply to win at four to seven. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section to this video. Thanks for stopping by.